So, Will, what's pretty unique here as well? You've an AD plant combining with a dairy farm. It's not everywhere you'd see that. Oh, so, yeah. what's the history of it, or when was it built? Uh, Dad's idea. He started up a business uh, probably ten years ago, and then started to like, diversify the farm. Put it in eight years ago. Uh, feed it mainly cow slurry. So we have a separate tank where we push all the fresh slurry into. That's then pumped into the digester. Uh, it's got two tanks here. Uh, this one is the digester. The second one's the post store. The post store basically keeps it for another 35 days. Uh, keeps the gas, so it's another 10% gas on top of previous. Okay. Uh, so you're not in less waste. And it's more storage as well, which is mm. it's quite handy. Mm. Um, yeah, so we feed a bit of chicken muck. Uh, we feed waste silage off the top of the clamps. We don't do any side sheeting because it goes into there anyway. I know it's some people see that as a cost, but for us it's just simpler and it, it just tends to work. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we have the, the separator here alleviates a bit of pressure on the on the storage mm. and we dry that so any excess gas we have from the digester we have these skips over here so we either put in the paper waste there you can dry logs in it and we also dry the bedding but it's like a chain reaction if you don't have enough gas to dry the boilers you can't dry the bedding if the separator breaks down you've got nothing to fill the, the skip so mm. it's a bit of a headache sometimes but so maybe for people where does it start where does the process start starts in here so if you come over here Obviously, the smell is delightful in the morning. Yeah. So you're effectively like a chef, so here as well, are you? Yeah. So this is the mixing pit. So you just dump stuff in over? Yeah, so this, there's a pump over there, yeah. which pumps in the fresh cow slurry. So into fills, the first tank here, Yeah, it fills it up to here. Yeah. We then put in a bucket of silage, a bucket of, uh, bucket of chicken muck, and then we just stir that with this stirrer, get it all, all the lumps out of it. It's a pretty serious stirrer. Pardon? It's a pretty big stirrer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got two of these. Yeah. Just in case one breaks down. If... So does it go down further? Do you extend that? Oh down yeah, further? you yeah. boom it right in. Yeah. Try and keep it tickling the top, and then drop it down to give it a good stir. Okay. Um, and then it just loads in with these two pumps here. So it goes, does... goes into the bottom. Does it flow gravity, or is it it's below where those two pipes there? No, is it? no, it's pumped. So yeah, pumps up those pipes into those pumps, and it goes into the bottom of the digester. And what happens is that it is it's broken down by the microorganisms. As it's broken down, it releases methane and it gets lighter. So yeah. the, the older stuff is, sits higher in the digester. And then what we do is we transfer the higher stuff into the next tank and it's the same situation there. So it'll sink to the bottom. As it's broken down further and further, it will rise up. And then we take the top of that and pump it straight over to the separator there. Okay. So is this tank full of material here? Full of material. Yeah. They're both full to the brim in. Okay. Yeah. And the separator is quite handy. And summer we pile it up spread it at the back end and it's also quite handy and the material over is your chicken manure is it chicken manure yeah, yeah. and why is that good uh it's full of nitrogen high organic matter it's really pokey feed um so it's also, a good feedstock for it's great feedstock for digesters yeah it's also great for fertilizer yeah um really high in nitrogen so that obviously is a massive bonus in organic because you're only your only fertilizer is your manure. Mm -hmm. So you're you're importing that, are you in, in these? Or no, 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 we just fetch it from yeah. um, okay. a couple of Issy Coward. Yeah. And we've got one in there, Donaldson as well. And then these are just the, the drying skips. So you've got a boiler there, you've got these two fans there, and you've got the the bedding material in there and it just dries them. Okay. Do it every empty them every four days. So that's what that contraption over there is. So we tip them up with this. A hook lift over here and then just scrape them out and that's for your bedding material bedding here, over the top. Okay. Yeah, yeah yeah so the gas you're creating then what, what are you doing with that it's sold back to grid so this is the engine yeah I'll show you in there if you want it's a bit noisy the plan was to have two engines but we couldn't get the, the planning or the the um the grid didn't want that much electricity at that present moment in time so we had a 500 kilowatt transformer which we had 250 kilowatts, then that's when we ended in the solar panels. I think that was three years ago. And there's 275 kilowatts of solar panels, but because they're southwest facing, you lose a bit of efficiency. But that utilizes the extra capacity. This is the engine. So the 
Gas is driving the engine basically. Gas is driving the engine and then um, the engine also is used for any um, excess heat used back in the digester to maintain the heat in there. Okay. And that's another handy thing about the boilers. The boilers can drive up the heat in the water which circulates around and it keep maintains your, your targets around uh, 39 to 40 degrees. We're sitting a little bit low at the moment. So you're selling power then back to the grid. That's back what you're doing. That's your primary income Scottish source. power, primary yeah. source of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have RHI meters on the boilers when we have them on for any surplus gas. Okay. Yeah. Sounds simple, but there's obviously a lot of mechanics. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of things to block. Yeah. And also the occasional shower of manure. Keeps you looking young though. Keeps the skin good. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another venture maybe. Yeah, why? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think many people want to be doing that. But How much time input would you have in a day for that? In a day? Uh, it depends how much is going wrong. Yeah. But uh, it's usually about two hours, two hours of loading. Every day? day? Every day. Seven. Yeah, so it's four loads a day, first thing in the morning, and you just try and spread them out okay. over the 12 hour work day. Yeah. And then spag it in. Yeah. Digest it then, you're using that, are you? Yeah, so we have Separated digestate, yeah. um, I think that's about 10 kilos of nitrogen per tonne and then the fresh, it's like separated, so the liquid we know sits between like 4.2 to 5% nitrogen. Okay, that's outside here then? Is that's it? here, yeah. yeah, so we've got two, three lagoons on farm, mm. we've got the old lagoon over there, which we don't tend to spread, so we use that in summer, we pump that around into the sump, because we haven't got any cows in the shed, mm. we want to keep the fresh material going into the digester, so we pump that around, so it's always digestate being spread. Try not to spread any straight cows. So through. that's key for your organics, then again. That's yeah. great yeah, yeah. first. That's why we have so much land, because we have so much imported manure, we've got to be able to spread it. Okay. And that's why we try and sell digest it as well. Yeah. But being in quite a heavily populated dairy area, mm. we've got to fetch it quite far sometimes. Do you sell any digest it? Yeah, I sell yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. As much as possible, but don't want to leave ourselves short either. Mm. It's always a cost of spreading it, isn't there as okay. well? So it's a big circle, circular economy, the whole thing here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And one little hiccup on one 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 area of the circle, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're able to solve most problems yourselves internally, are you? Yeah. yeah. Mostly. Yeah. 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 I mean, mostly me. Okay. It's because I've got loads of muscle on me to do all the lift today. <laughs> yeah. Fair play. No. So look, thanks for your tour, anyway. It's, no, no, no. Thank you for coming. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. No, it's it's a, a lot of. A lot of different industries in one yard, so well done. Yeah, I'll be bold in 10 years, I reckon, with all the stress. You'll be rich. I'll be bold in 10 years with all the stress. <laughs> yeah, you've a lot of hair to lose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grand job, thank Thanks you. Thanks for your time, Will. Easy. Thank you. Nice to meet you. So, Will, you're going to tell us about your feeding regime here. I guess what's different, it's an organic farm, so you have different constraints or maybe things that you have to consider. In terms of? How you grow your feed and the type of feed yeah, you grow yeah, so and how you get your protein. We were doing herbal lays. Uh, it wasn't really suited. Mm to our system in terms of we have quite a lot of heavy clay soils, uh, quite a lot of water logging, and we found that the herbal lays suit the drier soils, sandy soils much better for the deep rooting. So currently moving away from that, but still trying to keep a diverse mix in there. Um, we do four cuts of silage each year, uh, try and get the first and second cut early as possible, six weeks apart, and then it leaves a bit more wiggle room with a third and fourth. Mm. If we get like a bit of a drought in third, we try and do a lot of baling uh, because we don't have the silage uh, space for the amount of land we have. Mm. Um, yeah, and then try and get that with the new MVZ regs, I kind of try and get off the fourth cut mid to late September, mm. allowing enough wiggle room to get the, the slurry out before the 15th of October. Yeah. That's the combi pit. Yeah. Yeah, we grow oats, peas, and barley as a, as a mix. It's 40% peas, 40% barley, and 20% oats. I was trying to think about taking the oats out. I've seen a lot of people doing mainly uh, peas and barley but the oats tend to have quite a lot of straw which you utilize and um, acts as a really good weed suppressant. Okay. They germinate quite quickly and get away with the other crops quite well. Do you under-sow with grass or anything like that with that? Say that again, sorry? Do you under-sow with no, grass or no, anything no, like that? No, we don't, no, we don't no. whole crop, we combine it. Yeah. Um, we have done under sown in the past, but I find that you either get a really good crop of corn, a really good whole crop, okay. and then a poor under-sow. Yeah. So I try and keep it Trying simple. We do autumn reed seed. So the rotation is, Three years grass, two years combi. Then we do uh, we sow mustard, rape, and a bit of clover in the autumn for sheep keep, and it just keeps soil erosion and everything like that. Yeah, minimum. Good. Um, yeah, we've got four clamps here. This one's like uh, 
roughly 800 tons, 1,200 and then 2,000. Yeah. We did put hybrid rye in this one. Hybrid rye was a bit of a pay in the past couple of years. Because we're so wet, we have around 340 acres of uh, flood ground. So winter cropping is a bit of a pain. The grazing platform's around 440 acres. So you want to keep grass on that. Yeah. So we, we only do around 50 acres, well, 100 acres each year, but 50 acres one year, 50 acres another year mm. on the grazing platform. And that tries to utilize some of the nutrients because you obviously spread and cow slurry going on there quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, we do have a bit of a nightmare with this pit. We tend to put second, third and fourth. So we do get quite a lot of variability in the clamp. Okay. Which is a bit of a nightmare for the feeding aspect of it. Quite tall the pit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to get it high. Yeah, uh, but that's the amount of forage we have. We've got to got to stack it up. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, it's come all right. Okay, do you do your own silage or get it done? Yeah, well we we don't do our own chopping. Yeah, we get a contractor in for that. Um, we've got no yield monitors or anything like that. Yeah, so we change just to um, measuring of the clamps and stuff. Um, same with the combine. It's really old combine, uh, but we roughly averaged I think 2.75 tons on the combi this year, which I was pretty happy with. Mm. Um, but we were, uh, we had about, I think it was 80 or 90 acres, which we didn't get in. We had um, all that heavy thunderstorms early May, and then that was flooded on the ground. We were meant to put uh, 70 acres of fast and vast in. So that just caused a massive hiccup, and it got to the stage where it wasn't worth putting in. Mm. Because it's gonna flood again, putting all that seed and all the work into it in the middle of June, is there any, is there any point? Okay, so dye feeder anywhere? Keenan's? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good tool. Yeah. Do you have it long? Uh, had this one for two, three years, but we've always used Keenan. Okay. Uh, we can try and stick with the same brands, really, you know, to use them. Yeah. So your straight shed is here? Yeah, grain shedding's here. Um, it's mainly just bedding now. We're uh, minimizing how much feed we buy in. So this is dried separator digestate. <coughs> And then we mix that with Harley's, which is like wood chip and lime. Okay. 50-50. Uh, mm. And then that's the end product. So it halves our feed bill. Uh, not our feed bill, sorry. Um, our bedding. bedding bill. Yeah. And then we just chop straw for calves. Yeah. The spread of bale in here. Yeah. That's for spreading or dispensing your... Yeah, dispensing the bedding. So it yeah. goes up the cubicles. Uh, it's a pretty handy tool. Shell burn. So you do a lot of feeding with this machine here too, do you? The auger bucket. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just many for calves, and yeah. if, if you've got like 800, ton, uh, 800 uh, kilo to put out, there's no point sending the feed wagon up there. Yeah. Plus that shed over there, the straw yard, which I'm sure you might have seen, is uh, it's particularly tight. You might have seen we've uh, cut the Yorkshire boarding out just to fit the feeder through. That thing's knackered. <laughs> Put some uh, welding to it on that. Yeah. So machinery-wise, you do a lot yourselves? As much as possible. So we do all the tanking. Uh, we don't do, the only jobs we don't do is the rowing up, um, the chopping and the combining. And then we also either hire in an umbilical cord or we just contract it out, okay. depending on how busy we are. I mean, spring's a bit of a nightmare because we've got first cut to cut off. We've got all the corn to get in. Mm -hmm. We're obviously plowing everything up. Can't do any min till or yeah. direct drilling here. Got to bury the weeds. Um, yeah. So Kramer loaders, it's a big part. We treat them here. Yeah, we did use JCBs yeah. in the past, but then obviously John Deere. Uh, we've partnered up with Kramer, didn't they? So we just keep it all in house. Same. Use cornflakes or mowing tractors, yeah. and they do all the servicing. It's easy just to keep everything in house. Okay. And I really like them to be fair. The hydrostatic machine's brilliant. Mm. It's not amazing on the row, but in terms of mainly use them on the yard. Okay. Really, really handy. And the JCB load oil? That's years old, yeah. that. Um, it's done more hours than me on the farm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cracking machine. But it, it mainly just uses it on the stirrer. Yeah. So we have these two uh, loader stirrers. Um, not yeah. overly powerful, but they, they do the, they do the yeah. job. You just got to keep moving them. Okay. And I, I guess for people watching, they'll be saying, why have you three Kramers plus a JCB? But there's more than going on. You've, yeah, you, you've your digester, uh, carting bales, and we just try and do keep one year. So we do th two years warranty. Yeah. We'll keep them three years and yeah. we try and swap them. But the amount of yard work we do with the Kramers, it's worth having the extra one. Mm. 